Hi, good morning everybody. Happy Wellness Worship Worthy Wednesday to you all. This is Joe's and speaking. I just thank God for life. I thank God for health. I thank God for strength. I thank God for seeing another day. And God has given me a word today to give to the people in America and Caribbean because without His, we are nothing. And we are going down into it. I'm doing an early Bible study. Right, because I want people to understand the Bible. Right, we are going in to look into Isaiah. Right, Isaiah, because the Holy Spirit, right, guide me into preaching this word. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for everything, Father Lord, you've given to us. I pray in the name of Jesus, Father Lord, that people all around the world will be listening to me, Father Lord. Father Lord, you give them a sense of mindset, Father Lord, that Lord, they will honor you, Father Lord, they worship you, respect you, Father Lord, for who you really are, Father Lord, because you are the King of Kings, you are the Lord Lords, you are the Mary Redeemer, you are omnipotent, omniscient, Father Lord. I pray, Father Lord, Jesus, well, I pray, Father Lord, in the name of Jesus, that people will have the wisdom, the knowledge, and understanding, Father Lord, to know that you are God and you are the one in control and they will depend on you father lord and not only being on their own understanding but they will depend on you father lord as I'm about to bring your psalms father lord about to bring your lecture father lord about to bring your bible study father lord and about to bring your bible study summary it will be a blessing to the hearts father lord, that they'll be tuning in from all over the world father lord to be listening to me father lord the sound of my voice father lord and let your holy spirit comfort their lives father lord because and transform them by the ruin of your mind so the ask you father lord give me thanks jesus christ the lord amen so we are going on to psalms right psalms chapter 56 okay if you have your reading materials and your writing materials, which is reading materials, is Bible, and writing materials is notebook and pen. Go down into it, okay? So, Psalm 56, verse 1 to 13. I'm reading in, in the Amplified Bible, okay? Be merciful and gracious to me, O God, for man will trample me or devour me all the day long. The adversary oppress me. They that lie in wait for me would swallow me up or trample me all day long, for there are many who fight against me, O Most High. What time I am afraid I will have confidence and put my trust and reliance on you. By the help of God, I will praise his word on God. I lean, rely, and confidently put my trust i will not fear what man can do unto me all day long they twist my words and trouble my affairs all their thoughts are against me for evil and my hurt they guard themselves together they hide themselves they watch my steps even as they have expectantly waited for my life they think to escape with iniquity and shall they in your indignation bring down the peoples of god you number and record my wanderings put my tears into your bottle are they not in your book then shall my enemies turn back in the day that i cry out this i know for god is for me romans 8 31 in god whose word i praise in the lord whose word i praise in god have i put my trust and confident reliance i will not be afraid what can man do to me your vows are upon me, O God. I will render praise to you and give you thank offerings. For you have delivered my life from death, yes, and my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of thy, of life and of the living. So that is Psalm 56, verse 1 to 13. Be merciful and gracious to me, O God, for man will trample me or devour me all the day long the adversary oppress me. So, we read in Psalm 56, verse 1 to 13, that we ought to obey the Lord. We ought to be merciful and not study what people are doing, right? Allow God's presence, allow God to speak to you, allow God to use you, right? Because in this day and age, people need the Lord right people need the lord people need to 
repent, surrender their lives to the Lord, because Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by him. Okay? So be merciful means be, have sympathy, right? Be gracious. Come into the presence of the Lord and come into this, his cause with praise, okay? And it also says, they that lie and wait for me would swallow me up or trample me. So the people and them who have plans, wicked, evil plans, God shall destroy the works of the enemy, okay? Verse 4, by the help of God, I will praise his word on God. I lean, rely on him. So you need to lean on the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to rely on him and be confidently putting your faith and trust and not fearing in him. Because what can man, okay? If it's God, right? Nobody cannot go against you, okay? Because God is the superior. God is everything to us. And without him, we are nothing. Okay? So all day long, they twist my words. So all day long, they will do these wickedness and these behaviors and these things. But do not study that. Look up. Look up to the Lord Jesus Christ. Look up to the Savior who created you. Okay? Because he will give you the refuge and strength any time and trouble and despair. Okay? Verse 6. They gather themselves together. So, the flock, the oppressed, the haters, the enemies who do not like the righteous will watch, right, their steps, even as they expectantly waited for their life. They waited, they're plotting a plan, right? They're plotting a strategy to destroy God's people, right? But God said, look up. Do not study them. Do not, do not, that is a distraction, right? That is a distraction, to, is a plot of the enemy to destroy the righteous, right? God's people. But God said, do not worry about them. They will be like the, the, the grass, right? They will be withering grass, right? Verse 7, they think to escape iniquity, right? And shall they, in your indignation, bring down the peoples of God? Right, so that means they will ex they will plan an escape, right? They will they think they will escape. No, they will not escape because God is going to destroy them, right? You number and record my wonders, put my tears into your bottle. Are they not in your book? Then shall my enemies turn back in the day that I crowd. So Sam David is saying that he is praying to the Lord and saying, Be merciful and gracious unto me, Father Lord. Man is doing me all type of thing, all type of wickedness, all type of schemes. And Lord Jesus, I come before you into your presence and I want to be a different person. That is what Sam David is crying out to the Lord for. Right? And he's saying that his enemies will turn back to the day that he will cry out. Right? He'll cry out with his sovereign voice because he loves the Lord with wholeheartedly. Right? And we'll see we'll stand saying, God whose word I praise, and the Lord whose word I praise. So the Bible is the book, the ultimate book, that we must praise and worship and magnify God's name. Because his name is above every other name. Right? Not our names, not ourselves. Do not be boastful, saints of God. Be like Christ. Worship, praise magnify sanctify his name because he's majesty on high he's the king of kings he's the most high god okay verse 11 in god have i put my trust and confidence reliance reliance means to rely on mean to draw closer to him right mean to wait on the lord right because salvation has drawn at night okay in god have i put my trust and faith do not put your faith and trust in man, but God. Allow God's presence because God, without him, we are nothing. When we get up in the morning, we thank the Lord for life. We thank the Lord for waking us up. We thank the Lord for seeing another day, right? And we go about our day, right? But do not forget what God said. God said to humble yourself, submit yourselves to him, and he will see you through. He knows everything. He knows what you are going through. He sees you. He knows you. He knows your heart. He does not look at the outward appearance, but he looks at the hearts of men, right? Because man will look at the outward appearance, 
because they don't know better but god looks at the heart god sees god knows your your wrongs your right from wrongs god knows everything because he's the creator he's the higher authority he's the higher power he's omniscient my redeemer who liveth forevermore he reigns forevermore in the heavens above he's sitting at the right hand of the most high okay so verse 12 your vows are upon me O god i will render what shall i render to jehovah for he has done so many much for me what shall i render to jehovah for he has done so many much for me Bele, bele, bele. What shall I render to Jehovah? For he has done so many much for me. What shall I render to Jehovah? What shall I render? Render means to render is to is to give a is to give your all to the Lord okay is to give your all so you render praise that means you're giving praise to the lord you're shouting out you're doing some actions you shout to the lord all the earth let us sing power and majesty praise to the king mountains are down at the sea will roar at the sound of your name I sing for joy at the words of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. My Jesus, my Savior, no, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath all that I am ever cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord all the earth, let us sing power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down at the seas, will roar at the sound of your name i sing for joy at the words of your hands forever i love you forever i stand nothing compares to the promise i have and nothing compares to the promise i have and nothing compares to the promise i have and nothing compares to the promise i have in you okay so i will render praise to you and give you thank offerings thank offerings that mean a sacrifice ties offerings to the lord that he will sanctify it, that he will bless it, that he will give you more than ever before. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his sailing swanessy. More of his love who died for me. More, more about Jesus is a nice song. I love to sing. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for these songs. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Father. Thank you, Lord. You are just good. You are awesome. You are good. You are holy. You are everything to me. And I just thank you, Lord Jesus. I just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Verse, verse 13, for you have delivered my life from death. Yes, and my feet from falling that I may walk before God in the light of life. 
and of the living. The Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I be afraid? Nothing I didn't love the Lord. Nothing I didn't love the Lord. The Lord is my rock and my salvation. Whom shall I be afraid? Be afraid. Do not be afraid. The Lord is your light. The Lord is your rock. He's a way. He's a fortress. He's everything to us. And what shall we be afraid? We shall not be afraid. We shall not be terror by night, nor noon by day. Because we are in the secret place. We are in the secret place. No matter what you are going through, call upon the Lord. He will deliver you out of death. He will deliver you out of fear. He will deliver you out of doubt. He will deliver you out of confusion. He will heal you. He will heal the sick. He will do these things. Because He is love. He is more than tongue can tell. And I just thank the Lord as I come to your presence. According to Psalm 56, was one to 13 the message is today that we need to be merciful we need to lift up our voices lift up our hands and worship and sanctify so i just pray in the name of jesus that lord this will be a blessing to the house as i'm about to bring you a bible study i pray that father lord it will be a a really a revelation to them father lord that they will turn away from the wicked ways and surrender their lives to you father lord in the name of jesus christ oh lord amen so we are going on to isaiah chapter 50 Isaiah chapter 52 in the King James Version or the Amplified okay Isaiah chapter 52 verse 1 to 50 okay so I hope you all enjoy it Awake, awake. Put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall be no more come into you the uncircumcised and un the unclean. Revelation 21 to 27. Shake yourself from the dust. Arise, sit, erect in a dignified place. Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, loose yourself. From the bonds of your neck, O captive daughters of Zion. For thus says the Lord, you were sold for nothing, and you shall be redeemed without money. For thus said the Lord, God, my people went down at the first into Egypt to sojourn there, and many years later, Sennacherib, the Assyrian, Assyrian oppressed from them nothing for nothing. Now I delivered you from both Egypt and Assyria. What then can prevent my delivering you from Babylon? But now, what have I here, says the Lord, seeing that my people were taken away for nothing? Those who rule over them, how with joy, says the Lord, and my name continually, all day is blaspheme. Romans 2.24 Therefore my people shall know what my name is, and what it means, therefore it, they shall know in that day that I am. He who speaks, behold, I am. Exodus 3, 13, 14. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good tidings, who publishes peace, who brings good tidings of good, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Acts 10, 36, Romans 10, 15, Ephesians 6, 14 to 16. Hark your watchmen lift up their voice together. They sing, they sing for joy. For they shall see eye to eye the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth joyously, sing together, you waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has made bare his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, revealing himself as the one by whose direction the redemption of Israel from captivity is accomplished. And all the ends of the earth shall witness the salvation of our God. Luke 
two, 29 to 32, 3 to 6. Depart, depart, go out from there. That verse 11 in Isaiah chapter 52. Right? Depart, depart, go out from there. The lands of exile. Touch no unclean thing. Go out of the midst of her Babylon. Cleanse yourselves and be clean. You who bear the vessels of the Lord on your journey from there. Second Corinthians 6, 16, 16, 17. For you shall not go out with haste, nor shall you go by flight, as was necessary. When Israel left Egypt, for the Lord shall go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. Behold, my servant shall deal wisely and shall prosper. He shall be exalted and extolled and shall stand very high. For many the servant of God became an object of horror. Many were astonished. His face and his whole appearance were mad more than any man's, and his form beyond that of the sons of men, but just as many were astonished at him. Verse 15, So shall he startle and sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them shall they see, and that which they have not heard shall they consider and understand. Romans 15, 20, verse 21. Right? So, verse 15 in the last chapter is saying, So shall he startle and sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them shall they see, and that they which they have not heard shall they consider and understand. Lord, I just pray, Father Lord, that this reading will be a blessing to their hearts, wherever they will, internationally, Father Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So, chapter 54, this one, awake, awake. So, God is saying, saints of God, God is saying, is that we need to wake up, right? This is was in the Old Testament, Isaiah was a man of God, right? And awake, awake, put on your strength, put on the full armor of the Lord, that we're able to withstand the wiles of the enemy in the evil day, because we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Right, but against principalities, against rulers, according to Ephesians 6 10, verse 18. Okay, so we need to arise, we need to arise and awake, right? Wake up, right? Put on your armor, put on your strength, put on refuge, put, put on all these things, put on the fruits of the spirit, put on the kindness, the patience, the old Zion, put on your beautiful garments. Just as how in the Old Testament they used to wear gold and silver and, and all these things on them, right? They were very fascinated about their fashion, right? Just as how people wear a little short dress and things. That time, I mean, the dress code, right? Dress code is very important. You need to be a, a Christian. You're not supposed to be in the world. Do not be fashion of this world. But be have a mindset like Christ, right? And put on your garments. Put on your garments in such a way that it will be reverence, drawing reverence to the go, drawing reverence to the Lord. Okay, O oh, Jerusalem, the holy city. So Jerusalem was the holy city. That is where Jesus Christ and Mary and Joseph and all these characters in the Bible, right? They were real people. Mary, Mary and Joseph. The story of Mary and Joseph is Bethlehem, Jerusalem. Okay, but God is talking to Jerusalem, Israel, and the nations. Right, O Jerusalem, the Holy Spirit, for henceforth there shall no more come into you the uncircumcised and the unclean. So there, God did put a stop, right, to all the people, right, doing wrong things, doing sinful acts. God did put a stop, a blockage, right. God did, God did trash all these things. God knew the enemy was behind all of this, right. But God had to put a stop. So God is saying is arise, awake, awake, O Zion, awake, O Jerusalem, awake, O nations, awake people of God, right? Put on your strength, put on everything what I've given to you, right? And, and fight, right? But there shall no be no more things coming to you, right? Shake yourself, verse 2, shake yourself from the dust. So shake yourself. Shake yourself away from, flee from, from, from idolatry, flee from these things, flee from fornication. That's what God is saying. Flee, shake yourself from the dust and arise, 
Arise and sit down. Right? Arise and go into a place. Arise and be. Put on your mantle and go. Arise in all righteousness, in all beauty, in all power. Right? And, and go ye saints of God and focus on what I'm telling you. Right? And O Jerusalem, loose yourself from the bonds. So, O arise, shake yourself up, dust yourself up, right? You are, a, you are a new creature in Christ, right? You are not the old man. You are a new man, right? Arise and go and take up your cross, and I will give you rest. I will give you a new start. I will give you a new thing. I'm doing a new thing in your life, right? Loose yourself from the bondages of Pharaoh. Lo break all the chains, because you were in captivity. You were in the wilderness. Right? Right? Loose yourself. That means to loose yourself. That means to be free. Be free from the bonds. The bonds what, what Pharaoh did. The bonds what Pharaoh did, they put you down. The chains what they had you in. Right? You break every chain by the blood and by the power of Jesus. By power of Jesus. Okay? So... Verse 3, for thus said the Lord, you were sold for nothing and you shall be redeemed without money. So money, right, the Bible in the other testaments, is in the other, not testaments, in the other, in the other scripture verses in the Bible. The Bible says, for the love of money is the root of all evil, right? God said, yes, money must be good. But some people as use it bad. Some people as thief do all type of things with money, right? So, what shall it profit a man? Nothing. For thus said the Lord, you were sold for nothing and you shall be redeemed. So re be redeemed means that you shall be saved. I will save you. I will come for you. I will take you out of the gutter. I will take you out of whatever the enemy has doing. I will restore you. I will rebuild you. I will progress in your life. Because I want to do something new. I don't want you to go back in no captivity. I don't want no I don't want you to have no bondages on your neck. I don't want you to have nothing. All I want you is to be free. I want let my people go. I let my people go. That what Moses say. Let my people go. Tell the Egyptians that. Let my people go. So no matter what so if you have any pharaohs or any giants or any Egyptians in your life, you need to get rid of you need to get rid of right say lord jesus i really 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 am bondage i'm really bond i'm not set free as yet because of the pharaohs in my life father lord set me free from the shackles of the enemy set me free and when you pray that prayer god is going to really answer your prayer okay saints of god so coming back to verse 4 for thus said the lord god my people went down at the first into egypt to sojourn Sojourn means to pray. Sojourn means to draw reverence, right? And many years later, Sennacherib, the Azarian, so the Azarian and the Egyptian and the Babylon and the Pharaoh, all of these were places, right, in the Old Testament. Now I delivered you from both Egypt. So God delivered the people from both Egypt and Azaria. And what it is you're going back. What it is you're going back because what then they can they cannot prevent anything because it was a blockage, it was it was bondage they was going through they were toiling day and night for Pharaoh, they were toiling in the field they were working hard, and yet still that was bondage that was slavery, right? So God set them free, right? God set them free, right? They are not bound anymore, okay? So verse 5, but now what have I here, says the Lord, seeing that my people were taken away for nothing. So, God people, God the righteous people, the people who love the Lord and following him in his footsteps, the people who are baptized by the Holy Ghost, right? God's people taken away for nothing. That means that pharaohs and all these giants and things came up and they take away the people and them and do them wrong wickedness and all these things in Isaiah, right? And in Egypt too. So those who rule over them, call with joy, says the Lord, and my name continually all day is blasphemy. So his name 
is continual blaspheme. They're throwing stones at Jesus Christ. They're doing wrong things at Jesus Christ, and they still don't love Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ loved the righteous. Jesus Christ chastises those who he loves. He does do that, right? Because he wants to get your attention, saints of God, people of God, okay? So in this whole story is that we could learn that these people were Egyptians, right? And they were slaves for Pharaoh. They were slaves for them, right? And they work and they toil, they, they toil day and night. They work hard. And, and some of them were God's people, right? And God is telling them why it is they have to be taken away for. Why my people have to be taken away and, and get in, in bondage and all these things and, and chains on them bounded and all these things. Because of Pharaoh and these people, they were wicked people, right? They were wicked people. And they didn't want to let go of God's people because they know that if they let go of God's people, it will have a battle. It already had war and all these things. But God had it to deliver them out. God had it to send Moses to the people and them to let my people go. Right? So coming back to verse 6. Therefore my people shall know what by my name is what it means. Therefore they shall know in that day that I am he who speaks. Behold I am. So God is the I am, Exodus 3, 13, 14. God is the I am. He is the one, the creator of all things. He is the one who having you get up in the morning and every day of your life. He is the one that given you chance to speak. The breath, right? The breath that God gave us is very serious. And we need to take it very seriously and stop playing with our lives and start focusing on Jesus Christ, who is everything to us, right? Because he's the I am. He's the one in control. He's the one set apart things in our lives so that we could have abundant life. We could live a holy life in him. We could live a righteous life in him. So, verse 7. How beautiful upon the mountains were the feet of him who brings good tidings, who publishes peace, who brings good tidings of good joy. Who publishes salvation who says to zion your god reigns okay our god reigns 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 God reigns, our God reigns, our God reigns, our God reigns forevermore. Hallelujah, Jesus, you are everything to us, Father Lord, you are everything to us. I pray, Father Lord, that people all around the world, Father Lord, will be getting saved by the blood of Jesus, that Father Lord, you are Father Lord, control their lives forevermore. Amen. Okay? So, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who bring good tidings, who publish peace, who bring good tidings of good, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Acts 10, 36, Romans 10, 15, Ephesians 6, 14 to 16. Okay? So, this is saying is that, verse 7 is saying, we have to be so thankful and grateful that God created the mountains. God created nature. Right? And nature is so beautiful and wonderful. We are natural in our own. We all have gifts. We all have spiritual gifts and we have to use them in the correct way right when you look around is nature thank the lord for the life that god given us thank the lord that we could just wake up we could just worship we could just say that god is good and god is great and we could just be in his presence every day of our lives 
okay how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good tidings so jesus christ bring good tidings of great joy the holy spirit bring bring good tidings the angel gabriel right the archangel gabriel bring good tidings of great joy to the savior which was born in bethlehem okay because good tidings mean great joy being joyous being good being happy being peaceful being kind walking after the fruit of the spirit okay so hark mean hark your watchmen woe woe your watchmen lift up your voice right so all the watchmen lift up your voice sing harmonious unto the lord sing joyous sing gracious sing merciful right because for they shall see i tie the return of the lord to zion okay so zion is a place right jehovah jireh my god shall supply every single thing because he's jehovah elohim he's he's shalom okay and all these names they call him okay so verse 9 break forth joyously sing together you waste places of okay so you waste place of you mean do not waste time do not go back in your ways right i set before you a new journey go in that journey you will get abundance you will get blessings and favors if you obey my words if you just draw close to me right i don't want you to go back in the desert i don't want you to go back in the bondage even though let my people go even though moses i used to let the people go and i parted the red sea right do not go back in that wandering do not wander in the desert right come back to me you are wasting my time you are wasting my time said the lord right you are wasting my time i want you to eat the fruit of your labor i want you to enjoy life right through me right i will give you everything right i want you to sing together i want you to call upon all the nations right from the east to the west to the north to the south and in the middle central right in american caribbean and all around the world i want you to come together as one no matter what creed and race there is it's still of god right I want you to come together as one and sing praises to me and be in fellowship with me because I am the Lord God who created you, right? That is what God wants of us. As saints of God, people of God, do not get sidetracked. Do not get sidetracked of this world. This world have nothing. It's only chaos. It's only doubt. It's only fear. The enemies is trying to use some Christian people to fall back in their sins. Do not go back in your sins. Repent. Confess your sins to the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? So coming back, it says, right? So he has redeemed Jerusalem. He has saved Jerusalem from going. That's in verse 9. Verse 10. The Lord has made bare his holy arm before the eyes of all the nation. So the Lord, he ha, he ha, he got the whole world. He got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. So God got the whole world. He got us, okay, in his hands, right? The Lord has made bare the holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. So he does look over all the nations. He does look at us. He is the God who knows our hearts so you cannot fool god you are fooling yourself he knows how much how much um hair you have on your head he knows what you're going through he knows every single thing okay so focus on him okay and all the nations revealing himself as the one by whose direction the redemption of israel from captivity is accomplished so he already know that is god's plan for israel God's plan was for Israel is to allow the pharaohs to arrest the Levites, arrest the people of God, and to also make them into captivity and all these things, right? That is God's plan for us to have victorious and to be successful and all these things, okay? So that is the salvation of the all. All the ends of the earth mean all the nations come together as one, shall witness 
right, shall be a witness unto all nations, baptizing them in the Father, Son, and of the Holy Ghost, and the salvation and the eternal life of God, right? That means to say that he is he already. All the signs, all the wonders God is giving us is already here, right? You don't have to look for them. You just have to look up because your redemption draweth nigh, okay, in the heavens. The path, verse we'll 11, the path, the path, go out from there, the lands of exile. So the lands of exile are the lands of the weary, the lands of the weary people. Touch no unclean thing right so do not touch no unclean thing do not go back in your sinful acts right go out of the midst of babylon cleanse yourselves cleanse yourself mean purify yourself until lord go before the lord humble have a clean vessel right purify yourself anoint yourself with the anointed oil right come close to the lord draw close to him right with all cleanliness and godliness and having a form of godliness too right holy holiness 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 is what i long for holiness is what i need holiness holiness is what you want from me lord i come before you to lord with a holy Holiness, holiness is what you want from me. Lord, I consecrate you. Make my mind transform it to you, to you, O oh Lord. So, holiness, cleansiness, and purifyness, okay? So verse 12, for you shall not go out with haste, nor shall you go by flight, as was necessary. When Israel left Egypt, for the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. So that means to say, you shall not go out with no haste. You shall not go by flight. You shall go with purity. You shall go with holiness. You shall go with a new mindset, transformed right be a soldier an onward soldier who loves the lord who can stand on solid ground who can say i love you jesus thank the lord jesus for making me whole again thank the lord jesus for consecrating me thank the lord jesus okay so because he he's the god of israel he's the god of jacob he's the god of isaac he's the god he's the tribe of judah he's the line of judah right He's everything. Okay? So behold my servant shall deal wisely and shall prosper. So behold my servants, my faithful servants who love the Lord will prosper, will be abundant, will have will, who, those who obey me, those who trust in me, those who have faith in me, those who believe on me shall be saved. I will anoint them, I will appoint them. Right? Nothing cannot stop me from the love of God right and nothing can separate me nothing can separate my people from me right because i will destroy in the midst i will destroy the works of the enemy i will destroy them okay because i am the lord god i am who you have to serve and worship in spirit and in truth okay that is what god says okay that is what the holy spirit because the holy spirit does give me downloads too the holy spirit is the one in charge of this video the holy spirit when i get downloads from the holy spirit the holy spirit tell me to speak okay so that is the reason why i love the lord so much with all my heart coming back to the verses right i set before you i set before you i go before you right and i prepare a table for you in the presence of all your enemies so those who hate you saints of god those who hate you do not study them pray for them that's what god is saying pray for your enemies love them but be distanced right right you love them do not hate your brother you do not hate your brother you love them 
But if they keep on going back in their folly and their ways, I will deal with them. You don't worry about that. All you have to do is to focus on me. All you have to do is to look up. All you have to do is to seek me. Okay? Seek my presence. Hear my voice. Hear what I'm saying. Okay? So, Behold, my servant shall deal wisely and shall prosper. So, I will give my servants, my faithful servants, a work to do. Right? And if they do it with well-pleasing and acceptable, I will give them the reward. Because they will be exalted and extolled and shall stand very high. They will be upon the high, the high mountains. They will be upon. There was in the back seat. Now I put them in the front seat because I am the Lord God. I can do these things. Okay? Verse 14. For many the servant of God became an object of horror. Many were astonished. His face and his whole appearance were mad more than any man. So God's face was showing, God's countenance, God's appearance was mad in, in man's way. The man didn't like God at all, right? And his form beyond that of the sons of men, just as they were astonished at him, right? So the servants of God became an object. Okay, so the people in Babylon and Zion and Tig, right, didn't really love God's people, right? Even though they get stoned and they get thrown and all these things from in Egypt, right? They were in bondage and all these things. And because God allowed that to happen and allowed them to be free from the bondages of sin and all these things, right? They were really, they were really a a problem for the for the people them they were a problem because they were objects of horror that means they were a problem because they were they were set free so the people had issues with the servants of God okay and they they were so astonished they were so shocking by the testimonies what they gave to the people and them because they didn't believe in Jesus Christ they want to do the whole thing they want to do they were on God the people they didn't want to hear what God had to say and God's servants okay so they went back in their ways because they, they, they doubting they fear and they say wow I never know I thought God well I I never know I'm hearing that these, these servants got freed and they were in bondage and God set them free and it's so shocking and that is a good news but it's bad news to me because I'm ungodly person. I don't believe in God. That is what the ungodly people were saying. Okay? So, their face was whole appearance, like God's appearance. They, they, had, a, they had a mindset like Jesus Christ. They were transformed. And it was so, so like they, it was a light to the people of, of Israel. It was a light to the people of Babylon. It was a light shining. Right? So it formed beyond the sons of men. It formed, it formed a so it was a so light that people didn't believe, and now they believe that God could use anybody, and they believe God. People, because God's people, they deliver some of them out of bondage too. There were some of them were Levites and Canaanites and thing, okay, and. They were so astonished by God. They were so astonished that God could do these marvelous works. Right? So in last chap in the last verse, sorry, in chapter 52, verse 15, so shall he startle and sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut them out because of him. For that which has not been told, okay, shall they see, and that which they have not heard shall they consider and understand. So let us read it slowly again. So shall he startle and sprinkle. So God will, right, God will raise up kingdom remnants like myself, people of God, and they will be higher, and that they will be functioning in the, to the kingdom. It's not, about, it's not about our, it's about God's glory we're doing it for. So God is going to rise up people of God and saints of God to teach people about the Lord Jesus Christ, to pray for them to baptize them, to even evangelize, okay? To heal them, to pray for them, and all these things, right? He was going to give each and every them a work to do for him, to see if they're really capable of standing 
on solid ground despite whatever criticism, despite whatever is happening. So God is doing that. God is raising up people. So he will startle and sprinkle many nations. That means to say he will give them, give them what they need, give them the tools and strategies and cause things to happen among all nations, right? And he will also, the kings will shut their mouths, right? They will, because of him, they will shut them out because God is doing a new thing, right? In your life. Right? For that which has not been told them shall they see. So they will see for themselves that God is the King of Kings, God the Lord of Lords, and they will identify that God is doing something new in the earth because he will have signs and wonders. That is how we have signs and wonders that we know signs and wonders at the end times they say that Jesus Christ come again soon, right? God is going to reveal plenty. God is going to cause certain stuff to happen upon the face of the earth before his coming. He's going to bring beauty for ashes. He's going to save people. He's going to heal people. True of his, true of the prophetess, true of the prophets, true of his people, right? So, and that which they have not heard shall they consider and understand. So nobody, right? People will not understand, right? But when they see something, they will believe it because they will say that is evidence we could carry, right? So in closing, in closing, saints of God, right? God is saying in chapter 52, Isaiah chapter 50, verse 1 to 15, that we ought to obey, we ought to put our faith in him, we ought to trust in the Lord, we ought to seek him, we ought to praise, we ought to magnify, we ought to be soldiers and faithful servants of the Most High God because he wants to use us for his kingdom. He wants to use us dramatically for everyone to see those who were doubting those who were people who were saying all these things people who saying all type of evil words amongst you let the enemies come in front he will prepare a table for you in the front in the in the presence of your enemies because he want them to know that i am the lord god i'm the lord god who deliver out my people i'm the lord who could deliver you out and heal you and bring you to the front you were sitting on the back seat i will bring you to the front i will rise you i rise you and i prune you and i prepare you for your assignment that is what god is saying prepare to get assignments from the lord right prepare to pray for people despite love your brother and sister right love their brother and sister let us pray heavenly father i just pray for lord for this little bible study i pray father lord that it will be a blessing that people will arise and awake and understand father lord that you are the one in control and you are talking to them for all these years and they are not listening to your voice father lord i pray that they will listen to your voice and get the tools and strategies that they need to talk father lord that lord whatever assignment you get on that they will be obedient to it, father lord that they will love one another and do these things in one nest father lord Father Lord, just pray. I just pray, Father Lord, that the multitude of people, Father Lord, who are listening to me, Father Lord, in America and Caribbean, will open their eyes, Father Lord, and stop only being blinded and distracted by the enemy. Father Lord, I come against any principalities, any strongholds that hindering their life shall be getting out right now by the blood of Jesus. Whatever sickness, whatever cancer, whatever sickness they have alone in their bodies, they will be free from the bondages of shackles of the enemy, Father Lord. So I just pray, Father Lord, Jesus, that they will understand, Father Lord, understand your word, Father Lord, and let them get a gist of what, Father Lord, is to come in their life, Father Lord, because you are doing a new thing in your life for the people and the saints of God, Father Lord. So I ask this, Father Lord, as I'm about to bring your Bible study summary, Father Lord, it will be a blessing. And this word, Father Lord, will be a blessing that they will take it, Father Lord, and they will use it in their holy lives, Father Lord, well acceptable and pleasing to God. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. So I hope you all love this Bible study. It was a blessing. The Holy Spirit has given me directions god is going to lead you somewhere you just wait on the lord god is going to send the people in your life god is going to bless you once you obey him because it's not too late to know jesus christ it's not too late all you have to do is to repent surrender your life to the lord and forgive and love and god will come into your life the holy spirit will come into your life and you will see changes in your life okay
So let us go on to the Bible summary. I hope you all love this. This really, I tell you, the Holy Spirit does really work. Because God is holy. He's all holy and worthy to be praised. Okay. Okay, so first things first. This is a short Bible, a Bible summary, right? First things first is the heading. For what did Christ call us, right? The subject of this short article or better note will be just two verses in the Gospel of Mark, right? So it's pertaining to Isaiah 2. Isaiah 52, that I read, verse 1 to 15, okay? pertaining to that. The subject of this short article or better note will be just two verses in the Gospel of Mark. They are verses that most probably all of us know, but to which we don't always pay the required attention. They are in Mark 3, 13 to 14. Mark 3, 13 to 14, and he went up on the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted, and they came to him. Then he appointed twelve that they might be with him, and that he might send them out to preach. For what did Christ appoint the twelve? Many of us immediately bypass the path I have pointed out in bold letters, and they say that he might send them to preach. But this is not that the word of God says. He chose them and appoint them, first of all, to be with him, to have fellowship with him, to be wherever he was. Then it is to go and preach. So God is saying that Mark chapter 3, 13 to 14, is that God wants us to be just as him. We must walk, right, in the fullness of God. We must not wander around in, in low places, but fullness of God, right? We must accept that Jesus Christ came to die on the cross for mankind. We have a blessed hope in Jesus Christ. We have eternal life, right? And Mark 3, 13 to 14 said that they might be with him, right? Because he appointed and anointed 12 disciples among, among the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted, right? And what did Christ appoint the 12? Many of us immediately bypassed the path, right? That he might send them to preach. But this is not that the word of God says. So what did God said? He chose them and appointed them first of all to be with him, to have fellowship. So the Lord's Supper was to have fellowship with the Lord, taking communion, taking the bread and the wine. The bread was, speaks of the body that was broken on the cross. The blood speaks of God, right? The wine speaks of the, the blood of Jesus, what was shed on. So that is communion, okay? So, Christ has invited you and me to too, right? Though the go and preaching is part of the invitation, and though God has called us to walk into good works, he has prepared for us a place in the presence of our enemies. Ephesians 2 and 10, let us bear in mind that this invitation does not come first. What comes first, right, is to be with him. Right? What comes first is to prioritize God in our lives. What comes first is to seek him daily. Okay? And many of us focus first on works. So we, fo we, only, we focus on material things. We focus on material things in our lives. We're not focusing on what God is saying. We are focusing on what man is saying. We're getting sidetracked. We're getting distracted by the enemy. All these things. No. Focus on the Lord. Focus on him. Allow him to come into your presence, right? Draw closer to him, okay? Walk in the fullness of light with him and stop being in the dry places that you're not supposed to be in, okay, saints of God and people of the most high God, 
okay so many of us focus first on works and his bring and this brings dryness we must remember that go and preach part of invitation christ extending to us came second so what came first was to be with him so what came first seek him daily secondly he wants us to prepare he's preparing us to preach the gospel to the people and them right so in this whole summary right we just recapping i dealt up with today psalms chapter 56 right i also dealt up today the bible study isaiah chapter 52 1 to 15 and then i talk about the bible summary with first things first for what did christ call us so christ what did jesus christ said what did god said god said he called us to be just as him he called us into ministry he called us his calling God's callings are upon each and every one life. God purpose has a purpose and plan for everybody. But are we willing to live a whole life? Are we live, living a righteous life? Are we just only focusing on material things and not forgetting about what God say? Okay? So, ask these questions every day and go down on your knees and repent and surrender because it's not too late to do these things. Okay? So, I hope you all love this summary of the bible study that was pertaining today i hope that bless all your hearts in america and in caribbean right but god is so good all the time all the time god is good and we're giving god all the praise all the worship all the everything okay so So tomorrow we will deal up with the leadership series okay i'm just leaving it up today because i tell you god is good all the time right tomorrow we'll talk about chapter 5 10 ways to be a better leader right and i hope you all have a blessed day right i hope you all have a blessed day because god is good all the time and all the time god is good and last but not least, I will give you some Bible prayers that you will be able to say a prayer for, okay? So, prayer to overcome grudge, right? Dear Lord, my heart is gripped with anger and thirst for revenge. I have grown hatred in my heart for my wrongdoers and my anger has blinded me from doing what is right. Today, Lord, please help me forgive my wrongdoers and forget about revenge. Create peace among us and make us with your love. I say this short prayer, believing that all will be well. Amen. So that is a prayer to overcome grudge. So if you have any grudges on your workplace or any grudges in your home, you can say that prayer. Right? Prayer to overcome pride. My pride has made me overlook others, O oh Lord. Ignorance, ignorance has taken over my heart as I no longer humble myself before you and before people. I beseech you to remove the pride from my heart. Before I fall to shame, make me humble once again and teach me how to listen to the voice of reason. Your word says that if we humble ourselves before you, you will lift us up in due time. I am at your feet, Lord, with humility so that you may teach me your ways and salvage my image through christ i pray amen so this means to say that when you say these two prayers prayer to overcome pride and prayer to grudge you will be changed right by the ring of your mind okay so i hope this Okay. I'm looking very, very nice today. God is good all the time. I hope you all have a blessed day. Right? Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this whole, whole video, Father Lord. I pray, Father, will be a blessing. Despite I didn't have the leadership series, I will have it tomorrow, Father. I pray, Father Lord, that this whole Bible study and this whole prayer and this whole everything single thing would be a blessing to their hearts wherever they are american caribbean that father lord they will repent they will surrender they will take down notes for lord they will share with their friends for the lord whatever the by the song of my voice for lord i thank you lord jesus and the holy spirit they take over this video for lord and all videos for the lord that i'm doing for lord i pray for lord it'll be a blessing to the hearts that we worship you praising you seeking you for lord daily so i'm about to leave for the lord I'm about to go for the lord I pray for the Lord that people who have a blessed day wherever they have that sanctify that take away the doubt and the fear and the confusion in their lives for the Lord that they will be blessed and saved by your grace and your mercy in the name of Jesus Christ Father Lord let angels encamp around their house according to Psalm 91 to 7 in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord that they will look up to you to for you are the author and finish and open doors that you are open doors you are doing a change for the lord in the atmosphere for lord you are shifting people for lord for where they need to be for lord those who have to relocate those who have to get jobs though they have to get financial breakthroughs those who have to get things in the mail for lord that lord it will be testimonies for lord after testimonies in america and in caribbean for the lord that lord you for the lord is all for your glory for lord all for we give you the glory give you the honor we give you every praise and worship in Jesus Christ our oh Lord. Amen. So this is Josanne again speaking. I hope you all have a blessed day and remember to always pray because prayer does change things in your life. Focus on the Lord, right? Draw reverence to him and he will be your friend all the time. Okay, so you have a blessed day and bye-bye.